What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Pete's Carport. Thanks again for joining me. I know things are crazy out there, but just stick through this guys. We're all going to get through it. And while in the meantime, enjoy some awesome videos and content by me and other YouTube subscribers out there. So as promised, I told you we're going to jump back into solving this vibration issue with our W140. And if you saw the last video, I'll try to post that link in the comments below. We uh, took the wheel off, we tested everything, and we kind of figured out it was the upper control arm. So after doing that, I went ahead and um, got online to check what the cost would be to replace the entire upper control arm. And there's a lot of different brands out there when it comes to this part. And typically the prices are not too far apart. Um, I almost always first jump on FCP Euro because they give a lifetime warranty. And uh, the brand that they carried is Lempford. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's basically probably the direct replacement because that's what FCP Euro always uses. Uh, but it was a hundred and sixty something dollars plus shipping. And so uh, I got online, started looking around at different websites like Parts Geek, and then I messaged um, our good friend Vito from Vito's Garage, and he went online and found a couple other things and kind of reverted me over to Pelican, which is another uh, website, Pelican Parts, uh, that I've ordered off. I like that site. I've got, I've had great luck with them. They ship extremely fast, and um, he showed me this one here, which is Carolyn, and I've ordered them before too. Uh, I've gotten quite a few parts in that brand, and it is a German brand and it was $73. Now, Pelican doesn't give you a lifetime warranty, but they do give you, I believe, a one year or the manufacturer might even give a little bit longer than that. And so I was a little skeptical, but for less than half the price, I said, you know what, let me go ahead and see how this is and I can kind of test it out for you. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. There is the part number 140-330-7707 and this is for the passenger side. So this is going to be our passenger side upper control arm. Let me go ahead and open up the box. I'm going to show you something that Vito also taught me uh, that we're going to do before installing this. All right guys, so I've got the uh, control arm laid out on the table here. And this is the part that went bad on ours. So basically when I pull it, I'll show you guys, but I'm pretty sure this is just gonna move very freely. And that's why we're getting a ton of wheel play. Uh, kind of a common thing that can go, but you've also got uh, bushings that are up in this area here too, uh, that can get dry rotted and kind of wear out. So it's good just to change out the entire thing, especially at $73 uh, for a good quality one. So uh, let me go back to what I was talking about earlier. Vito told me uh, the best thing to do is move this boot up and that is possible by uh, basically taking this little ring off here or the top ring, pulling it down, add some grease into there, and then slide your boot back on, and he said that would give it a much extended life. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up and get that done. Uh, I'll walk you through how I pull this off here and how we get the grease inside there. I'm gonna use uh, the typical bearing grease that I already have that I'm gonna be using in the wheel, well, in the wheel bearing as well uh, when we adjust that. All right, guys, I was going to edit this out because it's not really necessary on this specific one to grease it because if I open this up, there's a ton of grease in there. Now, the reason why you want to do this is because a lot of manufacturers, uh, specifically if you don't know that it's a, um, a direct replacement part, uh, miss out on greasing these up and up. But since I've got this boot off now, I took this bottom ring off and just basically slid it up like that. I've got some gloves on so I can just pile some grease in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pile some grease in there since I've got it off. But if you're looking at buying this brand, know that they do grease it up very well and you're probably totally fine. Uh, this is just more of a precautionary thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that off camera. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be using just the same grease that I'm using in my bearings. It's a kind of a universal uh, grease for ball joints, bearings, and all that type of stuff. Just make sure you use the proper grease uh, for this application. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we're gonna move over to the car. All right, guys, so before we go ahead and take the tire off, I jacked it up, and I wanna show you guys how bad this wheel play is for those of you that didn't see the last video. And if I come closer here, you're gonna see that it is happening right up in that lower control arm right here that where that pivot joint is. So that's one thing that we wanted to make sure we greased up and last a little bit longer. So I went ahead and did that. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheel off and then I'm gonna walk you through how to take the uh, upper control arm off and how to put the new one in. 
All right, guys, we got the wheel off. Now I'm going to show you the first extremely difficult part about doing this on your own. You've got some Allen key bolts that are up in there holding a bracket on. Now, from the first look, it looks like you can just undo a bolt. Uh, that's going to basically undo your uh, upper control arm, and you'll be able to slide it right out and bolt it back into that plate. Unfortunately, the way they designed it, I'm going to show you guys over here, is, and this is how I knew, I went ahead and took this off. It's an entire um, bolt that goes all the way through, basically a shaft that attaches to the end. So you won't be able to take that out unless you get the plate off. And that's why it comes with a new plate. So you'll get a new plate on there, but unfortunately these are really in there. I basically sprayed them down with some PB Blaster, uh, let it sit, and now I'm finally getting to it. And I had to use um, one of these sockets. Now it's an 8 millimeter uh, hex head, basically an Allen key. And uh, this is a Pittsburgh set that I got from Harbor Freight. And then I've got a, because it's so hard to get off, you've got to really get it in there nicely. Or if you strip them, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So I went ahead and got it in there, pressed up against the wrench. And I'm slowly going just to make sure I'm getting it. And uh, I attached this bar here for an extension. Um, I tried to use an even heavier duty uh, socket wrench earlier, but it just wasn't long enough. So I was able to attach this to it. And that seems to be working much better so one step at a time I'm gonna get all four of those out and then uh, we're gonna undo the bolt here but I'll kinda film that and fill you guys in alright I got all the Allen keys out and I should have known and mentioned it that um, they're gonna use Loctite on this as you would with any suspension and brake components and they use the uh, blue Loctite so breaking that Loctite off is very difficult so just be aware of that um, you're gonna have to move very slowly and kinda just brace yourself Try to use a bar extension like I did and it will come out. Now I've left the last one in there just to make sure that stays secure up there. And now I'm going to work on getting uh, this bolt off here which is a 19 millimeter. And you obviously have to hold one side and undo the other. So I'm going to take that off really quick. And then I'm going to take that last Allen key off and we'll pull this out and we'll examine this. And then we should be able to get our new one in there. I'll go ahead and uh, make sure I fill you in on torque specs on this thing and go look that up and then make sure you use Loctite on uh, the inside bolts here. Um, I'm going to check. I'm not sure if you need Loctite on here, but I wouldn't think so because you're going to torque this to spec. So let me go ahead and get all that for you guys. All right, did a quick store run, got all the essentials, got the TP, which is hard to come by these days, uh, some beer, and we're going to be using uh, Loctite like I showed you earlier on those Allen key bolts, putting them back in. This is the blue Loctite. Make sure you use that when you uh, re-put that back in. And then I went ahead and rented a um, tie rod ball joint separator, and this is usually available at most local auto parts stores to rent. You want to snag this so that you can pop out uh, the original part. I'm going to show you guys that right now. All right, guys, so on here, what you need to do is we got to get this bolt out of here. So I'm just basically going to back this out um, using my 19 millimeter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open this up either using a pry bar or uh, maybe just a screwdriver. We're going to try that first enough to where we can get those, um, those forks into here and pop this out. Once we get that out, we'll sh I'll show you guys the next step of kind of reinstalling because all we got to do is take one more bolt that I left in there just to keep that secure. We're going to pop that up, undo that, and pull this whole thing out, and then I'll put it on the bench and we'll take a look at how bad uh, this pivot joint is here. So stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and back this out, and then I'm going to show you guys how I open this up and we pop this out. All right, guys, so good news. As soon as I pulled that bolt out, uh, and basically all I had to do was stick the screwdriver in here and wiggle a little bit the whole assembly flip now This is going to drop so you got to be careful uh, You hold this so you don't damage anything so this is going to just drop down and that's going to pop up So be careful um, when doing this because you don't want anything to swing and hit you now I'm going to be able to undo that allen key back there take this out now I want to mention a couple of things the service manual and also online. I found a um, Kind of a tutorial that somebody put together. I could not find a video on this, but I did find a tutorial I'll try to link that and I'll show some photos of it but it calls for a wax that goes down into here and it's um called cavity wax and it's you can get the mercedes product but 3m also makes it uh it's very very um necessary if you are in a northern state that they use salt because it basically keeps erosion and rust and all that out um i couldn't find it locally and for me to order was going to take quite a while so i'm going to skip it for now because I'm in Florida and there's really nothing that should cause corrosion. Of course, fill me in in the comments if it's something that is absolutely necessary even here and I'll go down uh, and put it in. But I talked to some guys at the auto parts store 
Sometimes they give you wrong information, but they said, I highly doubt it's necessary in Florida, um, but it does call for it in the manual. So make sure you add that. Like I said, I'll put that on the screen now. I'll uh, try to link uh, purchasing that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, and then we're going to start uh, assembling our new um, upper control arm. All right, it's always good to get these things off the car and check out how bad they were so you feel confident that you're changing out the right parts and check out that. Now this one, obviously I have one hand, I'm not even gonna be able to move that, and that is how it should be. This should be extremely stiff, because that's gonna keep your car stable. And you guys saw originally how I was moving the wheel, so that is absolutely one of our major problems. Hopefully it's the only issue left we have with vibrations on the car. So now we're gonna move on to the next step. Now this is something I did a ton of research on, and that is torque spec, how to torque everything down. And I found a few different really good uh, places that listed a diagram or talked about the exact way of doing it. And I found a, uh, like a picture diagram that I felt was very easy to understand and uh, kind of goes through the steps. So there is a, uh, quite a few steps to get this thing torqued down properly. I'm gonna put the, thing on the, uh, the diagram on the screen and then I'm gonna talk about it as well. And then we're gonna actually have to measure the angle, the pitch of this, and then we're gonna torque down and we're gonna basically measure 63 millimeters of curvature and I'm going to convert that to inches for you guys too because I know a lot of you out there are in the U.S. and we use inches unfortunately so I'm, I'm going to use 63 millimeters and then I'll explain how that even works and how and the steps to torquing it down and I'm going to torque it down with you guys and then um, I have a lifetime uh, basically uh, alignment on this car. So I'm gonna take it down and make sure everything is, is aligned properly. Of course, we'll take it for a test drive, see if we have any vibrations. And then, um, you know, outside the video, I will be getting it aligned and I suggest you guys do that too. All right, let's go ahead and get set up and I'll explain everything. I'm gonna uh, basically put that diagram up for quite some time and keep reinitiating that into the video so you guys can see that. So you can kind of walk along with me and understand what you're supposed to do. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to tighten up this long bolt here, the shaft that's going through the top part of our upper control arm. And all we're going to do is get this to a point of being tight, but that we can freely move this just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set that pitch. Um, like I talked about, 63 millimeters. I'm going to explain that on the car. And then we're going to torque this down to the specs. So I'm going to go ahead and now tighten this up, and then we're going to put it up in the car. I'm going to basically put these in. We're going to use um, Loctite on these four Allen key bolts here, and these are going to be torqued down to 50 Newton meters. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this set up, put it in the car, and then I'm going to move over to there and explain the next step. All right, guys, so quick filling on the left side of your upper uh, control arm part here, you're gonna make sure you slide in this bracket that's gonna hold your ABS line out of the way. You wanna slide it back behind. It's a little difficult, but you can finagle it, get your bolt in. Once you get the first one in, the second one's gonna line right up. Just wanted to fill you in to make sure you guys uh, put that back in if you have that available. Some people might not. If somebody else changed it out and tossed it away. So hopefully you have that. That'll keep this ABS line nice and tight out of the way. All right, guys, those are all torqued into 50 Newton meters. Now what I did here, I had to basically get another jack, put it up underneath the wheel here, align this, and it wouldn't go in. So what I ended up doing was taking uh, that screwdriver, getting it in there while this was lined up, just kind of hammering down and prying it open as much as I could, and eventually it just slid right in. It actually went in pretty easily. It took me about five minutes of just hammering a little bit and then it slid in. Now what we can do is uh, re-put re our bolt in. Now the manual calls for replacing uh, that bolt and nut, and I'm not exactly 100% sure why. Um, fill me in in the comments if you guys know why that bolt's supposed to be replaced, because it seems like a bolt that can be reused. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use it and torque it, but once again, fill me in. If I need to replace that and order another one, let me know, guys, in the comments, because to me it just didn't seem like it was a necessary thing, because it looks like a bolt that's definitely reusable. All right, guys, so I found out that's, that you are supposed to change out. This is a locking nut, and it makes sense now. Uh, they wear out once you use them, but there's a little trick. My mechanic said um, usually you just throw some thread locker on there, and you're good to go. At home, suggest that you just completely throw that out, replace it uh, if you can. 
I want to get this done right now. I've got the car up in the air and I just want to get it down. So I'm going to go ahead and put thread locker. He said that would be perfectly safe for my circumstance, but at home, do the safest thing and go ahead and get yourself a new nut and a new bolt. And um, this needs to be torqued down to uh, 125 newton meters or 92 foot pounds of torque approximately. And um, you want to basically do that before moving on to torquing that back. Now, um, that's going to be a little difficult. I realized after I put that bracket in, for me to get my torque wrench up in there is going to be very tough. So uh, the guy next door, Chuck, that I was talking about that mentioned uh, putting the thread locker on there, said he's got a little tool he can throw on there that can help me uh, align it and get it torqued on. So I'm going to wait for him to bring that over, and I'll show you guys that. He said it's for tight uh, spaces like that and allows you to torque the uh, bolts down. So I'm going to get that done in just a second here. Just wanted to let you guys know if you put that bracket back on, which I thought was going to be really necessary to align that, but you can, if you didn't put it in there, you could figure out a way to get that um, ABS cable out of the way and it would make it much easier to get your uh, torque wrench in there if needed. So just to fill in there, I'm going to go ahead and torque this down now and then I'm going to move on to that once he brings that tool over. All right, guys, so this is how you set the pitch of your uh, control arm. Now, what it calls for, as you guys saw on that diagram, I'll put it up right now, is going to be a 63 millimeter pitch from here to straight across there. Now, that is going to be really difficult to measure unless you've got a specific tool that I'm not aware of from Mercedes. But what I found was a really good write-up that's a downloadable form uh, from a gentleman who basically did pictures and descriptions on how to do it. And what he came up with is torquing it off the car. And I'm going to show you guys how I even came up with an even better idea in a second here. But what you want to do is match up the original part because you can see there. And so what, that's kind of what I did. I put this as the best I could in there and kind of measured uh, the distance and everything from here and got it the best I could right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and torque that bolt down. I'm going to show you how you can make this way easier. Also, uh, one of the subscribers, Zach, as I mentioned earlier, uh, talked about these Allen key bolts needing to be replaced. And I highly suggest you guys do that. ECS Tuning has them for $9 a piece, and I'll link that. Uh, I did talk to a couple other subscribers, as well as uh, found some other forums where people reuse the original ones and just made sure they put a lot of the Loctite on there. I highly suggest you change them out for safety reasons, but I'm going to go ahead and test these since I don't drive this car that much. I'm going to go 100 miles, and we're going to see if they're loose, and we're going to do it again at 500 and so on. And um, if we have any issues, we're just going to swap those right out. So let me go ahead over to the bench. I'm going to show you guys uh, an easy, even easier way of torquing this thing down and getting that pitch to be correct. All right, so I've got our old control arm over here on the bench. And if you've got a bench or even like a piece of wood that you can clamp down to a table, what you can do is bolt this down to the either the bench or that piece of wood, clamp that down, and then take your new one. Unfortunately, mine's on the car right now. I'm not going to take it out. You can place your uh, new control arm and then you can set the pitch exactly the same, and then you take your torque wrench and another wrench and you tighten that up, it's all the way to torque specs. Then you place it in the car and you're gonna be good on the angle. So that's the easy, even easier way. I'm gonna do a full video on that when I do the other side so you guys can get an idea of exactly what I'm talking about with the new control arm next to it. All right, so let's get back to the car. All right, guys, so she's torqued up in there. It's a 125 newton meters. I've read 120 newton meters, not a big difference. It's just gotta be really tight. So um, you wanna have it jacked up, like I said, so that you can set, there's a spring in there, and you're gonna set that spring load, basically, to be at the proper pitch. Uh, now, after you've got that, you can slowly let down your jack. You just gotta be careful. And there you go, and it should be set into place. Now what that's gonna do is allow you uh, to have the proper height when you're hitting bumps and everything, and it'll bounce back to the proper position. You are going to wanna get a, an alignment after doing all this stuff because you're putting on new parts on your suspension and it could throw your alignment off and cause uneven tire wear. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, we went ahead and looked at this and I know uh, other components are gonna to need to be changed. So I'm gonna be doing a, a few more videos. We're definitely gonna be doing the tie rod because I can see some play still in there. 
and we're probably eventually even going to do the drag link which is all attached up under there as well and work our way to our lower control arms when we eventually change out these springs to drop this car down so we're we're eventually going to get to every single suspension component on this car which we will narrow down what is causing the issue and i really wanted to do this one part at a time so i could actually learn the exact specifics to this you guys have been absolutely awesome can't thank you enough zach you really helped me out by filling me in with the bolts um he actually used a bolt here too uh, as a replacement bolt from Ace Hardware. Now you got to make sure you get the proper hardness. That is very important because these are a very uh, solid steel bolt and um, uh, if you need more help on that, I'm hoping he fills in on the comments the exact specs on what he got. If not, I think the stock bolt is going to tell you right on it the hardness that you need. Just make sure you bring that bolt with you when you go somewhere so you get the proper bolt if you're not going to order it from Mercedes. So that's that. Um, like I said, we went ahead and put Loctite on ours and that is something I've seen on other forums people do. So we should be good on that because that is torque to spec as well. So uh, once again, feel me in guys on anything you guys have learned, anything you see that uh, I might need to adjust or take care of. Uh, as you might might know, I had already uploaded a video and I just I had to make a few adjustments. Zach filled me in. Ray Kroll also filled me in on this proper pitch on getting that put in and that made me do some research and find that write up so you guys can actually do go back and read that and do it properly. Once again, Anytime you guys are doing suspension components, make sure safety first. If you don't feel comfortable doing this or you're questioning anything that you're doing, go back, do more research, or have a professional shop do it. Um, these are not super, super expensive things to get done. I enjoy doing them myself. I enjoy learning the process, and I enjoy learning from you guys as well so I can pass on that knowledge and we can continue to keep these cars on the road without spending a fortune because as they get older, more things are going to go wrong, and it's going to cost a lot more to get the things done and there's less and less mechanics out there willing to work on these vehicles unfortunately so um, like I said this is my second upload I've already taken this car for a test drive after getting the alignment done the first round and it did help some of the vibration but I'm noticing that the wheel is still giving me some uh, play and I, I put the tire back on and I'm still getting a little play so that's unfortunate this did not fix the issue but hey one more day at a time, one day at a time, and we'll eventually fix this. I'm gonna go ahead and order my tie rod for this side, and we're gonna go ahead and change that. Then we're gonna to move to the other side. I've already checked the other side, obviously, guys, and that, that wheel does not have barely any play in it, so I wanted to start over here to see if we can eliminate the vibration by just changing out some components here, and then I figured we'd go ahead and swap out everything the same on the other side. So once again, my name's Pete. This is Pete's Carport. I hope you guys liked the new upload. You guys enjoyed the first upload, and I enjoyed hearing from you. Fill me in once again in the comments. You guys have an awesome day, a blessed week, and I'll see you back next time.